So you may have tried a lot of things during your anxiety recovery journey and they didn't work out the way you wanted them to. You may have been hoping that, oh my God, this was the way out. This was it. Oh my God. Okay, now you try it and you do it. You may feel well for a couple of days, maybe not, but you notice, man, you're still stuck. You still have this problem. And sure, these things helped. Maybe you even tried a few things and they helped. They're like, you know, I'm, I'm in a much better place than I used to be, but it doesn't get to the root cause. What do you do? How do you get out? Well, in this video, I'm gonna really break down how to really get out. A huge part of this is actually mindset, but there's a lot of key components that uh, a lot of people don't talk about and something that I see a lot of people trip up on. So with that said, let's get it started. So look, I, one thing about me when I had anxiety was I was committed to getting this fixed. Commitment wasn't the issue. I was committed. I tried anything and everything. I went to doctors, naturopaths, um, then I went to functional doctors, then I went to chiropractors, then I went to um, acupuncturists, physical therapy, um, yoga, meditation, I mean like literally everything. Any alternative base like any alternative medicine I know about because I tried it at some point in my in anxiety. I remember I tried these random herbs like that literally, I, I literally tried anything and everything. I tried every single supplement that was out there, literally everything. And then, okay, fine, maybe it's not a pill. Well, then let me go ahead and try, um, you know, exercise, this, that. And I read every book that I could find that had to deal with anxiety. If it said anxiety relief or anxiety help, Maybe this person knows the answer. Maybe they know something that just didn't click for me. And if I could just figure that out. And I became a self-help junkie. And, you know, if you would have asked me at that time, Sean, how are you doing? I'm like, you know, I'm doing much better than I was, but I still had a problem. Now, how did I know I still had this problem? Because I was still searching. I was still trying to find answers. And if you would have asked me, they're like, oh, Sean, you know, like, are you doing better? I'd be like, yeah, you know, I'm much better than I was before. But... I learned a lot of ways to cope, but I never really addressed the problem. And I still felt like I had this underlying problem. Now you may be feeling that as well. I understand, I understand. And so one of the things to really understand that most of these, everything you see out there to a certain degree are techniques to cope, not tools to heal. And so you may be thinking, well, what's to heal? Do I need to heal some childhood trauma stuff? Do I need to go back in the past? I heard healing comes from within. Well, you don't need to go into the past. You don't need to focus on any of those things. You really need to focus on now. But the idea that recovery comes from within is 100% true. However, just because it comes from within doesn't mean you have to figure it out on your own, right? Like for example, if I'm giving direction, if somebody comes to me and saying, hey, can you point me to the direction of this coffee shop? Right now, I can point to them the direction and they can, they can avoid losing a lot of time if they just follow the direction. But who really went to the coffee shop? It was them. They still used their two feet and they walked, right? If somebody asked me where's the coffee shop, I can point to them where to go. And if they didn't go there, they can't blame me. You know, they had to move their, their two feet. What's the point of me saying this? The point of me saying this is that, look, recovery does come from within. All these things you're looking at, they're all coping tricks. They're all coping managing tricks. I know I did it myself. Everyone does it. In fact, in the mentorship, by the time everyone finds the mentorship and decides to commit to the mentorship, they've tried everything else. They've tried everything else. So it's not even like, oh, let me try this mentorship. They're literally like, there's nothing else left. Can you imagine that pressure that puts on me? But I'm cool with it because I know this is the only way out. This is the only way out. There's no other way. And it's not my way, it's just the only way. My only focus is on how do I get people out as quickly as possible? How do I foster, facilitate, and cultivate their recovery as quickly as possible where they don't need anybody, including me? That's the only thing. But, you know, you may have noticed you've tried all these things and you're like, oh man, I didn't recover. I didn't get better, you know? And it's really easy to think that maybe it's you. 
maybe it's like, man, maybe you just couldn't recover because your anxiety is just too unique. Your symptom is just too strong. Your symptom is just too bizarre that there's just no way it can be you. But it's not true. It's absolutely not true. You have no idea how many times people, like I, to, to me at a certain point, like I even kind of get a little bit direct about it because it's like, dude, if, if so many people tell me that they're so unique, <laughs> who's really unique then, right? The unique person is really, hey, Sean, I know I'm not unique. I'm like, really? You really think that? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, interesting, interesting. So here's the thing. Oftentimes I see people who want to get better um, not try something new because of fear of failure. Yeah, and so what I mean by that is, look, I tried all those things as well. And it was really easy to want to give up. Now, I knew giving up was never an option. But it was just easy to not do anything, right? I, like I say in the very beginning of the video, I was a very committed person. But everything going wrong, I became a little bit resistant. I became a little bit scared of, okay, what if one thing actually does work? Well, then, if I was wrong the pain of me being wrong was too, too great. And so what I was doing was I was making my decisions based on my fear, which was I'm fearing of being wrong again rather than the possibility of being right. And so that's what really threw me off at the time. And that's something that I see a lot of people. You know, there's people on the mentorship, uh, people that apply for the mentorship, not people in the mentorship. The people in the mentorship, they invested in themselves and they're committed to recovery, and they're, they're crushing it. I mean, they're not just, the people in the mentorship, the results are so outrageous that a lot of people don't believe it from the outside. <clears throat> They'll look at it and they're like, I don't even think that's possible. I think like Sean's just making that up. Like, I don't, but I mean, it happens all the time. Um, but you know, I'll see people that, you know, maybe want to apply to the mentorship, but then back out last minute. And it, it, they do, they're doing the same thing I, I would have done too, to a certain degree when I was struggling, when I didn't know what I was doing, which was, oh, well, but what if this is wrong again? Oh, I've spent so much money. Like, what if this is wrong? Okay, well, the material's there. Maybe I could figure it out on my own. Recovery comes from within, right? You know, I mean, look, athletes, the best in the world, they still have coaches, you know? And the goal of this is still to focus on overcoming this once and for all and not even relying on the coach. The best coach is you. The best healer is yourself. But getting there sometimes, um, you know, you may need a little bit of help. And what's wrong with that? You know, I never looked at that as an ego thing. I never looked at that as something to be ashamed about. I took pride in that. You're investing in yourself, right? You're really focused on your own recovery. You're investing. This isn't like something you're investing in and it depreciates like a car. This comes back 100% to you. Right. And so, um, you know, when people, let's say, you know, want not don't want to join the mentorship or, or want to do whatever, I, like I say, it's not a big deal. But even if they didn't, if they decide they don't want to invest or whatever, I don't take that as a personal issue at all. Not at all. Like I say, this whole channel, the book, the Facebook group, the Instagram account, all these things that's free. It's for you to guide you on your recovery journey. But if you need a little bit of extra help and um, there's an issue with investment because you've tried so many things and it hasn't worked, it's not, I don't take that as personal. I just look, I, I don't take it personally at all. I just say, I totally understand. But it's not you're investing in me or the mentorship or anything. You're just not investing in yourself because it's, it's your future, right? Recovery to a certain degree is your responsibility, right? I can show you the way. I can guide you and point you to the direction, but at the end of the day, you're the one that's walking, right? I can just show you the fastest way. And so remember, recovery lies within you, and don't let fear of failure be greater than the opportunity of this working out. Because I had plenty of opportunities during my recovery journey where I could just give up, where I was just like, well, what's the point? You know, I would be living my life and, you know, I'd hit, get hit with a setback and I thought I was doing so much better. And I remember I would continue living and I would ask myself, why am I doing this? Like, I don't even think this is going to work long term. But what other option was there? I'm so glad I didn't give up. I'm so glad I didn't give up because the, the reward was so big. The reward was a second chance at life.
to me. You know, this, the reward was almost having a second opportunity in life so I could help you. You know, so I, I know <laughs> that's, that's really how I feel. So something to think about in terms of mindset, um, don't devalue yourself. Um, when it comes to mental health, I don't need to tell you how debilitating it is. I don't need to tell you, hey, mental health awareness. You know, you're going through it, it's rough. So if it's a priority, make sure to get it addressed. And if you haven't gotten addressed or if it hasn't gotten help, don't take it as some personal issue with you. It just may mean that you're not focused on the right steps. And if you focus on the right steps, that's it. It's inevitable. So I hope this video helped, and I'll see you in the next one.